Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Veronika Spievag, and I am a simulation engineer working at the 3D Experience Lab, startup accelerator of DASO System. I am very pleased to be here with you today, joined by Victor Premo, CEO and co-founder of Hopper, a young French startup working on new, uh, new type of blades, changing lives of people with disabilities, making sport practice available to many and more. Victor, thank you, welcome, and thank you for being here with us today. Before we dive right in, I think you have something that you wanted to show us first. Yes, thank you, Veronica. Hello, everyone, and thank you to be here. Uh, I just wanted, wanted, as an icebreaker, to show you a, a short video uh, for you to understand what we are going to talk about. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I know your project well. Thank you for sharing this video with us. Every time I see this type of videos from you, I have goosebumps. Um, so Hopper was founded in 2021, uh, but it's, uh, so it's been almost two years as a company for you, but I know that the project started way earlier. So can you tell us more about yourself, your, um, how you ended up here and how the idea for Hopper was born? Okay, so um, uh, I'm Victor Premo. Uh, as Veronica said before, I'm a 25-year-old engineer from a, a French uh, engineer school uh, that's called the uh, IMT Minalbi near uh, Toulouse in the south of France. And uh, during the, uh, our study, uh, I founded with uh, eight friends uh, a company that's named uh, Hopper from the grasshopper, the, the animal, because of the bouncing of the, of the grasshopper. So we wanted to call our company with that name. And during our studies uh, at the engineering school, we had uh, a project uh, that's called uh, Mission Innov Action, where uh, we have two, uh, two, um, two uh, the project leaders that uh, come to us with uh, a problem, and we have to solve this problem in four months. And uh, uh, one of our project leaders was Jérôme. Jérôme is a tri triple amputee. Uh, he's amputed uh, from uh, two legs and one arm, and he came with uh, one of his friends, uh, which called, who is called uh, Benjamin. Benjamin is a calcul engineer at Airbus, and they came uh, to us with one problem, that was to make sport more accessible to MCT people. To better understand the, the Jerome's problem, you have to understand that uh, MCT people have, uh, during their, uh, their daily life, prosthetic feet that they can use for walking and uh, for daily life activities. And uh, in France, uh, the, the walking feet are reimbursed and uh, accessible for the, the majority of MCT people. But uh, these uh, walking feet are limited when they want to, to, to make sports or to run, for example. The, the, the walking feet are heavy, they, are, they lack dynamism, and uh, they will uh, engender uh, some shocks on the ground when they, they want to, to, to run. So in order to, to make sports and to run, you have to get uh, a carbon blade. The, the carbon blade uh, you can see uh, everywhere are in the Paralympic Games uh, are the, 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 the most famous, uh, I would say, 
uh, tools that are used to run for MQT people. But the problem is that the, these blades are very expensive and they, they, they are developed for high level uh, athletes. And the, the beginners uh, have difficulties to, 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 to use these uh, blades for developed for high level uh, uh, runners. And then uh, another problem is that the, these high level blades are mainly developed for stadium sports. And we, we want to, to, to go further than to uh, practice, uh, for example, the 100, 100 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters, 800 meters, or a long jump. But we want need to develop a new blade, a new sport blade, more accessible uh, financially more accessible and easy to use for beginners and that can be used everywhere. That was the, the, the main focus uh, of this project. And so uh, we started to, 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 to generate ideas and we uh, organized uh, a workshop uh, with the Airbus Humanity Lab. It's a, a fab lab in Toulouse. Uh, in Airbus that, um, that uh, permit to uh, employees of Airbus to develop uh, impact solutions. So we, we generate uh, a workshop with their team and uh, an idea uh, emerged from that workshop. It was the idea to use upcycle uh, carbon waste from the aeronautical industry to create uh, carbon blades more accessible. So uh, th that was uh, how the, the relationship with uh, Airbus began uh, uh, at this moment. And uh, we, we created our first prototype in 2019 uh, at this moment. We had at the end of the, uh, our mission of four months uh, the, at school, Two first prototypes that we, with that, um, we, we, Jerome tried uh, our prototypes at the end of our four month mission. And uh, we continued after the mission to work on this project on our own time. And we created two years later the, the company uh, Hopper in 2021 uh, at the end of our scholarship. And then uh, we, we continued to work on our product and uh, we uh, started to commercialize it in 2022. And uh, now it's now uh, uh, eight months that we are commercializing uh, our products and uh, we have more than 200 people that run with, the, with that blade uh, so far. Well, that's really amazing. First, to be able to reuse composite waste that no longer serve one industry and then be able to serve another industry in, uh, for such a great cause. Um, it's really a brilliant idea that I, I really like personally. And um, also, I think it's such a powerful thing that you were able to, uh, from the beginning, address a real need from people who uh, had this problem and you were able to test your, uh, your blade right from the beginning, so to be able to provide the best product. Um, now, we would like to know uh, what are the specifications of the blade that you uh, have worked and developed since, and uh, how did you address them? Can you share a bit more detail with us? So uh, first, we, after the, the, need, uh, the needs analysis we made, we focused on the cost reduction. We wanted to, to, to have a unique blade uh, in order to, to reduce the, um, the tooling and the production costs to, to with just one shape of blade. So we started to, um, to think about the shape of the blade. Uh, we wanted to make it as comfortable uh, as possible in order to, to facilitate the, the, the usage of uh, beginners and, uh, and, uh, and new runners, I would say, uh, that wanted to, to start again the sports after their, their amputation. And uh, we wanted also to, to, to have the, a blade as versatile as possible. So we started to analyze existing blades in order to get uh, height and uh, stiffness references to, to, to start from uh, real data. 
And then we designed different shapes of very rounded blade. The, the rounded blade uh, um, uh, improved the, the, the comfort and the flexibility of the blade. And then um, we started, uh, after uh, the, the first simulation of, uh, of the, the shapes, we focused on one shape uh, that was very, really pro promising, and we started to, to prototype. Um, it's important to, to notice that we have only one shape, but uh, several uh, ranges of, sti of stiffnesses, because we have to adapt to the weight uh, of the people. Uh, so we, we, we change the orientation of the different composite stacks in order to, to get different blades to, to adapt to the weight of the people. And then we have the weight, but we also have the type of activities. Uh, for example, uh, basically, uh, the faster a person goes, the more they will press on the blade. So we have to, to adapt to the, 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 the type of activities. We have also the type of, the, of terrain. For example, um, a runner that will run on uh, technical terrain, such as uh, trail for trail running, for example, in the mountains, they, 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 they will like to have a, a, a more flexible blade to adapt to difficult terrain. So there are many parameters, and we have to develop different uh, stacks of carbon composite to adapt to the, the, the specification of the, of the user uh, the, at the end uh, of, the, of the process. And then, um, at the end uh, of, the, uh, of that, we have six different ranges of stiffnesses to adapt uh, to users from four, uh, four, uh, 45 kilograms to 110 kilograms. So um, it's, I think it's really challenging to be able to address all of these specifications and trying to deliver the simplest product that will fit all the needs, but also at the most competitive price. So just for reference for our audience, what you're seeing on the screen is uh, the simulations that you have done with um, Dassault System software on the 3D Experience platform, testing all these different stiffness for one shape of the product. Um, I am curious, how heavy is such a blade? Uh, this blade is around uh, 700 kilograms, uh, and it's interesting to compare it to uh, a real human leg. Uh, below the knee, uh, a human leg uh, weighs around uh, 3 to 5 kilograms, whereas a blade is only 700 uh, grams. So uh, it's uh, really lighter than uh, the, uh, a real human blade, leg. So, very interesting, like, you make it maybe easier for people who have already, um, well, are not advantaged to be able to, to run, but um, you're providing a lightweight product, which is um, very interesting. Um, how does your prototyping phase look like, uh, maybe using our 3D Experience platform? Can you tell us more about this yes, uh, about our prototype uh, facing, we do everything basically on the 3D experience platform. We, we do the shape design uh, and we can share our shape design with our manufacturer uh, directly. We do a composite design uh, with the, the, the Katia advanced app uh, on the 3D experience platform. And then we, we do the, the structural uh, simulation. Uh, to test, uh, analyze, and validate our, um, our design and our model to, uh, on the, 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 the Simulia apps to then, um, to then uh, go to prototyping uh, after this phase of, uh, of the simulation. And at the beginning of the project, uh, as I said before, we designed different shapes uh, with, uh, and we simulate it to get different stiffnesses to adapt to the, the needs of the, of the people we identify. And especially with Jérôme, uh, I, I come back to Jérôme, that was uh, our first beta tester. And he, he, has, um, uh, he had a, a specificity that he was double leg amputed. So uh, there was a, a symmetry between his two legs. So it was easier to, to create a blade for him. 
and uh, we had first to, to create uh, two prototypes each time because uh, we had to, to create a prototype for each leg of Jerome. And uh, it was the, the beginning of, uh, the, of our prototypes. And uh, then when we, we, we done the first uh, prototyping loop with, the, with Jerome, we created uh, several prototyping loops with different subjects because we wanted to, 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 to have uh, amputee people with just one leg uh, amputee in order to, to have the, the, the result of the, the, the use of our blade compared to, to uh, a leg that is not amputee. So uh, we, we had uh, several prototyping loops with uh, the, a new uh, stacking uh, calculation and then uh, a, new, um, a new phase of uh, prototyping, uh, manufacturing uh, prototypes. Then we're testing it on a, a bench, uh, a bench test uh, to, to know the, the failure point, for example. And then we use it on the real test on uh, different terrains in order to get the, the user feedback to uh, improve our products uh, at the end. That was the, the, the main um, uh, phase of uh, our prototyping phases. And at the end of that, we uh, created the different ranges of stiffnesses to, uh, to cover the, the entire spectrum of uh, amputee people from uh, uh, 45 kilograms to uh, 110 uh, kilograms. And there was a, a, a really uh, challenging part in the definition of uh, boundary condition. Uh, we are working on uh, static simulation with uh, fixed boundary conditions. But when uh, a, a runner is, uh, is running, uh, the, the condition, the boundary conditions uh, and the, the local uh, uh, situation are completely, constantly changing. So it was important to understand the different phases of, uh, of, uh, of a run to understand the critical phases of the, the, the running dynamic of the, uh, our subjects to uh, modelize this uh, critical phases of the, the running dynamic to uh, simulate it on the platform. And that was uh, really challenging. And uh, we have a lot of work uh, to, to do on that uh, thematic uh, uh, in the future, but it was uh, really challenging and uh, really interesting. But uh, the idea is that it was really um, easy to, to, to work with uh, all our data uh, uh, we have all on the, on the platform, on the, on the secured cloud, uh, directly on the platform. And we have uh, the, all the stakeholders of our team that can uh, access to, to our data to, to modelize and modify uh, our, um, our design and simulate uh, new ones. And uh, this will become um, um, uh, better, uh, more and more better when we, um, we will uh, grow with new people on our team to, uh, but to implement uh, and to, uh, to enroll these people on the platform with all the data will uh, for sure be uh, very useful for us. Yeah, I guess having your data on the cloud and then just bring the new people uh, is something that makes the onboarding faster. Yeah. Uh, about the team, how many people are currently working on uh, at Hopper and how do you anticipate numbers growing? Uh, at Hopper, we have, uh, we have many partners that are working uh, with us, but uh, in the, the current team, we, we have eight co-founders, but just uh, we are uh, three people uh, full-time working on this project uh, currently. But we are looking to uh, hire uh, three more people in June and uh, three uh, more people uh, after the, the, the summer of uh, 2023. So uh, we're growing. <laughs> growing slowly but surely. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we are really glad to hear that the 3D experience platform is helping you uh, achieve that and that the design and simulation tools being all accessible in one place uh, is something that you enjoy. Um, you have mentioned at the beginning that some other companies are part of the project. Uh, can you quickly tell us about uh, them and uh, yeah, who is involved and to which capacity? 
Yes. Uh, first, we have uh, Airbus, as I mentioned before, uh, with the Airbus Humanity Lab in Toulouse, but also with Airbus and uh, Techno Center uh, Composite in, uh, in North, in the northwest of uh, France. Uh, we are working uh, with, with them uh, since the beginning of the project uh, on the carbon part uh, of, the, of the blade. We are upcycling the, the, the carbon from Airbus and uh, they, they helped us uh, in the past to, to create the first prototypes uh, for, for, for this blade. And then we have uh, Salomon also, that uh, is a, a major partner uh, of this project. Uh, we, we started to, to work with Salomon during the COVID crisis. The, during the COVID crisis, all the races were cancelled and uh, Salomon uh, has the, had their um, uh, service, their uh, athlete service dedicated to, to uh, professional uh, runners, to professional athletes, and they helped us uh, to uh, create uh, an all-terrain uh, soul. And the idea uh, is to have a, a quick changing uh, soul system that is uh, really uh, a game changer in the prosthetic world. And uh, the, this, uh, this soul uh, permits uh, all our users to go uh, on uh, different uh, difficult terrain, uh, in the mud, uh, in gravels also. It's uh, a really uh, interesting part uh, uh, of the blade, and uh, there was a lot of uh, prototyping loops also on this, uh, on this soul. And um, it was really interesting. But Salomon uh, helps us on this soul, but uh, they also helped us on the, um, on the biomechanical studies. They, they are uh, studying the, 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 the runner's dynamic in their, uh, in their shoe manufacturing and uh, their shoe design. So uh, they helped us to, to understand the dynamic of an amputee runner. And uh, we involved uh, a, a Swiss company also the, that's called uh, DAES on this, uh, on this part of uh, dynamic simulation. And uh, it was really inter interesting to understand the, the, the dynamic the involved and uh, in the biomechanical uh, studies that, has, that have to be done uh, on, the, on that subject. And uh, finally, we have also Cisco Composite, that is a, a partner uh, uh, of Hopper in the, the manufacturing and uh, all the production process of the, this carbon blade. So uh, it's the, the major partners, but uh, I, I want also to thank many uh, other partners that we have. And uh, I will not forget that we also uh, uh, we also have um, are uh, accelerated by the 3D Experience Lab, uh, as you can see. And the 3D Experience Lab is a, a, a major uh, catalyzer for, the, for this project. They, they give us uh, all the necessary roles uh, on the, the, the 3D Experience platform, but they also help us to, uh, and support us in the, the, the use of the complete platform, and that, uh, but that, help us, that helps us to, um, to, 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 to go faster and, uh, and to be better on the, on the tools that, that we have uh, uh, in our hands. And they also help us with uh, marketing and communication uh, problematics, problems. They also um, uh, invite us to uh, many events, such as the, the, the JEC, for example. And uh, the idea is today is to bring some of our, of our partners into the platform to uh, enhance our collaboration and strength, strengthen uh, our collaboration with them uh, and uh, facilitate the, the sharing of information and uh, the communication between uh, them and us. Well, very excited to hear that and looking forward to see see that happen. Now, very quickly, as we are running out of time, uh, about the next steps for uh, the next challenges that you uh, face and that you think you will be able to address with the 3D Experience platform. We have many uh, new aspects that we want to work on. We want to work on uh, new materials. We want to be open uh, about new materials. But we also want uh, to, uh, to work on dynamic simulation. It will be a, a real game changer if we can just with simulation 
better understand and uh, and uh, and uh, create real virtual clowns uh, of uh, amputee runners with new prototypes to understand how they will feel the, the blade with about comfort, about, uh, about dynamism. And we want to, to go further to this and to, uh, to go from static simulation to dynamic simulation with virtual clowns uh, that will uh, uh, enhance our development because we, we will be able to test new prototypes without uh, manufacturing a lot of uh, prototypes and it will be uh, really interesting uh, to develop new, new, new products. Yeah. Well, at Dassault System, we aim to provide solutions that enable to harmonize product nature and life. So I really think that this particular challenge really perfectly answers to, to, this, um, to this philosophy. Anything else uh, that you would like to share with our audience before we finish? Um, I will uh, sh shortly say that just uh, we know that we have the, the Olympic and Paralympic Games in, uh, in Paris in uh, 2024. And uh, our objective is that uh, every amputee uh, that wants to, 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 to do sports uh, can, will be able to do sports uh, around, and, uh, around these uh, Olympic Games. But uh, we want to make it possible with the blade that is more accessible and designed for everyday runners and not only athletes, high-level athletes uh, sponsored by, uh, by sponsors. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's our main goal and we want to, to achieve that uh, around the, this wave of the Olympic and Paralympic Games. That's really such a beautiful goal. And thank you so much, Victor, to have joined us today, to have shared your accomplishments and your, the challenges that you and the team had to face to bring this Blade first version to life. Um, we look forward to keep supporting you and be part of your journey, obviously, to take it further and provide the best product to um, people who need it. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And thanks to Jack for organization. Uh, if you have any questions uh, for our audience um, online, do not hesitate to go to Katia user community and comment, ask questions. We would love to connect with you there. For those who are here with us today, we will be present at the Dassault System booth to answer any questions that you may have right after the session. So do not hesitate to come by. And um, well, thank you all for your attention. We wish you a great event and let's keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much.